Welcome to the Next Step in Care learning series. This video is designed to provide healthcare and social service providers with ideas and guidance on ways to work together with family caregivers. So we'll be talking about the improving transitions uh, for persons with dementia and their family caregivers from the pharmacy perspective. Um, you know, this is an oldie but goodie quote. Any symptom in an elderly patient should be considered a drug side effect until proved otherwise. So basically, that's my perspective. When I review a patient's chart, I look at the drug regimen, and I look at what's happening with the patient, and what's been documented in the medical record, and I think, is this a drug issue? You know, is this a drug-related problem? And uh, so, uh, and that was uh, Jerry Gerwitz, who's a noted geriatrician from UMass um, uh, General, um, uh, and uh, also I think Jerry A. Warren's on there. Um, uh, these physicians are noted for their geriatric practice care and also for whistleblowing. So, it's very interesting. So, medication-related problems. I'm just going to give you a quick definition. An MRP or medication-related problem or events or circumstances involving drug therapy that actually or potentially interfere with desired health outcomes. And part of what um, I do and what I would encourage everyone to do is to be able to identify a medication-related problem. We're all in this together. Um, there aren't enough pharmacists to go around to be able to do this. So um, I'd like to empower you with a lot of information on these slides. I won't go through every single detail, but you can refer back to them. And also adverse drug events, the definition for that, or an ADE, is an injury resulting from a medical intervention related to a drug. So one thing, uh, the, the first things that I want you to pay attention to when you're looking at your patients with dementia and speaking with the caregivers are any red flags that could be possible symptoms of medication-related problems. And, and these are the classic red flags. They're, it's not an all-inclusive list. What I would say is ask the caregiver what the normal baseline for that patient is and is, if anything is different. Has anything deviated from the normal baseline of behaviors or the condition of that patient? And then, you know, once you identify what that change in behavior condition is, um, then the process of elimination of is it a drug issue, is it a new diagnosis, is there a stroke occurred, did a stroke occur, or et cetera. But, um, this list is really inclusive of known adverse drug events from uh, medication, uh, due to medication-related problems. And, and, and most of these are due to anticholinergic drugs, which we'll talk about in a moment, but other high-risk drugs are included also. So new or increased confusion. Not just confusion, but new or increased. Has it worsened? Um, a family member may say um, that my, my dad is always confused. What do you mean? Is the, are, is the is he confused? He's always been confused. Well, has it worsened? Um, newer increased depression, delirium, which is a short term, uh, might be a short term effect of a drug, um, and uh, you might note that. Um, newer worsening insomnia, Parkinson's like symptoms, so movement disorders, any rashes, new incontinence, weakness or le lethargy, loss of appetite, falls changes in speech, bruising, bleeding, blood in stool, or nausea and vomiting. So these would be your red flags. Um, and um, further along, I'll note to you that I would recommend that you look at your care plans and have you and, and, and your patients and have these red flags be in the care plans. Has anything happened to the resident um, that could indicate that it's a drug-related problem? So this is directly from the new beers list. I just clipped and pasted out the, um, the, the charts. Um, the new beers list came out in 2012, and it's the American Geriatric Society criteria for potentially inappropriate medication use in older adults due to drug disease or drug syndrome, drug syndrome interactions that may worsen or exacerbate the disease or syndrome. So here is the... Um, disease or syndrome, I have delirium and dementia and cognitive impairment. I kind of put them together, I clipped and pasted them out of the table. It doesn't look quite like this in the table. So um, if you go to the actual document, you'll see. And these documents are free and they're in the resources. 
that I provide that we provided in our in your folder of uh, safe medication use resources, so you can link to that, go to that link. So delirium. So any drugs that can cause or worsen delirium are listed here. I'm not going to go through each of them. Um, TCAs is tricyclic antidepressants. They're the big baddies, amitriptyline, etc. And you're probably familiar with that. And then the rationale for why it's a problem. And the same with dementia and cognitive impairment, anticholinergics, which is a TCA or the, 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 the um, poster children for anticholinergic uh, problematic effects in patients. But other drugs also have anticholinergic effects, and we're going to talk about that also. And then um, you want, would want to avoid these drugs because of adverse uh, central nervous system effects. And you would avoid antipsychotics for behavioral problems of dementia unless non-pharmacological options have failed and the patient is a threat to themselves or others. Because antipsychotics are associated with an increased risk of um, a stroke and mortality in patients with dementia. I think the increased risk of stroke is three times. I don't know, doctor, if you remember, but um, I know the increased risk of death is one and a half to 1.7 times increased risk of death. And then these are some drug lists of drugs with strong anticholinergic properties. So you can see here, um, it starts with the antihistamines. Um, these are problematic. The, the worst one that I see um, is um, diphenhydramine. That's a real problem because patients can get that over the counter and their physicians might not know and their caregivers might not know that they're taking something that helps them fall asleep at night. But that drug also worsens their cognitive condition and can make them fall when they get up in the morning. Um, I, I still work part-time in community pharmacies and I still see elderly people come up with a bottle of, of Benadryl, which is diphenhydramine, and they use it for sleep. And I ask them, why are you buying this? And, um, and usually the answer is sleep. Sometimes, you know, doctors will tell their patients to use it if they have a rash or an allergy and then I'll, I'll warn them of the adverse events. Sometimes they tell me that the doctor has told them they could take it for sleep, which is not appropriate. So then I tell them that. I say, you know, if you want, I can call the doctor. You can have the doctor call me. I'm, I'm willing to speak with them. And sometimes I'll write them a little note to bring back to the doctor, and I'll sign it and give my telephone number. I've never had anybody call me back, and I don't know why. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's good to have dialogue. Um, and then, so the, the drugs that have anticholinergic properties um, are listed here, and I'll let you look at that yourself. Um, some of the things that we'll talk about a little later are the drugs that are used for urinary incontinence, um, oxybutynin and, and others here we'll talk about a few slides down. So anticholinergic side effects, some of these were on the previous slide, but these are really more specific to anticholinergic drugs. So dry mouth or eyes, blurred vision, um, you may not even realize that until patients start tripping and falling or, um, or having problems uh, you know, identifying what's in front of them. And that could also be a symptom of dementia, not recognizing what a cup is. Or, um, so, so, so it's important that um, this be parsed out from an anticholinergic effect. And anticholinergics, obviously, they worsen dementia. So, so this is just a, it's a, it's a, a terrible, nefarious circle for these, for these patients. And then um, confusion, delirium, memory impairment, you know, looks like dementia, um, dizziness, drowsiness, hallucinations, again, you know, they're all problems. Urinary retention or difficulty urinate, urinating. They may be put on those drugs that I mentioned before for urinary retention, which have some anticholinergic properties that, that, although the drugs are meant to work on the bladder, they can still enter the brain and still cause cognitive dysfunction. Well, kind of like that. Um, constipation is an issue uh, which can worsen urinary retention or difficulty urinary, urinating. Decreased sweating, increased heart rate, falls, and heart palpitations. So anticholinergics and dementia have particular problems. They're worse for people with dementia in general. And the cholinesterase inhibitors, or CEIs, such as Aricept, Razodine, and Exelon, um, are, could be problematic in these patients because these patients are at increased risk of receiving anticholinergic pres prescriptions if they're on a cholinesterase inhibitor. And the reason for that is, is twofold. So the Aricept, the Exelon, Razadine, they may cause irritable bowel 
and which can cause um, ur urinary uh, 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 retention problems and urinary issues. And then they maybe get put on those drugs like ditropan, which is oxy that can enter the brain, which can worsen um, their uh, dementia overall. And then, um, uh, secondly, if patients are on an anticholinergic already, they could be exhibiting worsening dementia, and then finally they receive the um, cholinesterase inhibitor. So those are the two reasons why these patients who are on these drugs are at increased risk of being on anticholinergic prescriptions at the same time. So be very careful about that. Um, and you know, the goal is to try to reduce as much, as much anticholinergic uh, drugs as possible. Um, so anticholinergics and combinations with these CEIs results in an decreased ability to perform activities of daily living, decreased mini mental state exam scores occur, and they sh should not be used together.